This is part six in a series of videos in which I am repairing an IBM 5120. In the first five videos I've addressed a lot of the easy issues, cleaning the case, that sort of thing, and uh, from this point on it starts to get a bit more complicated. In this video I'm going to start looking at the power supply, which is this, and um, as you can see it's in the same sort of condition that the rest of the machine is in. Not quite as bad as it looks perhaps, but um, still quite a, a lot of things that need doing to this. So I will need to strip it right down. Uh, there's some uh, fairly bad corrosion on the back of the machine. So this particular part I'll be removing and um, I'll be refinishing this. So I'll uh, again be blast it back to bare metal and uh, repaint it. Uh, I have checked all the fuses, they're all intact which is a good sign, it means that um, there wasn't anything catastrophically wrong with this when it was last used, doesn't mean there isn't now of course but um, it's a good sign that there wasn't anything uh, drastic at the time. Um, I will be taking all this apart, I'll take the capacitors out, I'll do leakage uh, tests on those, uh, make sure they're all fine. I'll take the um, filter box apart, make sure the filter's fine, check all the switches. I've spent some time looking at this and the, like the rest of the machine it's very much um, appears to be a design by committee sort of uh, layout. Uh, there are no sensible wiring loom runs so everything's um, cross-linked and there's no way to sensibly get certain parts uh, off without dismantling quite a lot. For some bizarre reason there's a a fuse on the end of this long lead so that the fuse holder can be put into a different part of the machine. Um, no idea what that's about. Um, the whole machine's like that, it's uh, just a kind of a hodgepodge of uh, layout and uh, odd design decisions. Uh, it looks like one part was designed by one department and another part designed by somebody else and then the, the whole thing kind of cobbled together. And considering this thing cost as much as a house at the time, um, it's, it is um, a bit old in some of the decisions that were made. Uh, for example, we have two boxes here. We've got this one that holds the main part of the supply and a filter box here, um, but they're different sizes. So rather than being a, a separate uh, or sensible step between the two, they've just bolted something on here at an angle. Um, it's kind of a strange uh, thing to do on something this expensive, but it, it is what it is. This is how it's laid out. It is going to be uh, difficult getting this apart, I think. I've had a quick look at it and it looks like I'm going to have to fully dismantle it to get to the actual power supply board. And that's what we'll be looking at in this video. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is take it over to the workshop, uh, get the compressor uh, going and blow all this dust out, um, vacuum it out, just so we've got something reasonably clean uh, to start working on. Uh, looking at the supply, it looks relatively straightforward up to a point, um, but as ever we have these uh, SLT um, modules in here. Now I will be doing a separate video on these SLTs. They are um, quite an interesting technology that uh, IBM developed uh, back in the 1960s and 70s. And these were kind of developed alongside um, what we'd normally deem to be standard ICs. So where you have monolithic ICs these days that we're all used to seeing, 7.4 logic ICs, microprocessors, that sort of thing, these are actually hybrid modules. And the difference between the two is the hybrid modules that IBM developed were really ceramic bases with uh, discrete elements um, put onto them, transistors, resistors, that sort of thing. Whereas monolithic ICs, the entire circuit is on a single uh, chip. Uh, these aren't like that, there's multiple uh, chips in here. Now quite what's in this particular machine I'm not sure. This was built quite a long time after IBM developed these. So they may be standard SLAs or these might just be carriers that hold um, monolithic ICs. Um, but I will be going into these in detail in a separate video because the technology and the cards that were developed alongside them is uh, very interesting to, to look at and look into. Um, it was um, a case of developing a new miniaturization technology in the form of these modules. 
but at the same time they developed uh, quite an interesting uh, card development system but I'll look at that in a separate video um, but for now what I'll do is go and get this cleaned and then I'll bring it back on camera and we'll start to dismantle it so I've blown all the dirt and uh, loose debris out of the supply it's not clean but it is now uh, a lot less uh, likely to drop bits all over the bench so what we'll do is we'll take this apart into its major components and then I can examine each one and we'll try and find a way to power up the supply board and start testing it but before I do that I want to test all the uh, larger capacitors uh, and any devices that look a bit suspect so first thing I'll do is open up the filter box we've had a look in here already in a previous video but um, I'll open this first and we'll have another look inside and we'll take this box off and so all that's in here is the main switch that's the main power switch this, this protrudes through the front of the machine uh, a filter block it's a standard um, filter block to uh, take the noise out of the incoming mains uh, it's all crammed in here fairly tight so uh, we'll check there's no wires being uh, trapped anywhere and then there's a circuit breaker at the back here so um, this is a uh, overcurrent device so nothing much uh, of interest in here but I'll test this separately I'll disconnect the output of course and then uh, run some power through it after checking for any shorts or, or leakage in the, uh, the filter caps the next thing I want to take out is this um, capacitor uh, block here uh, as far as I can tell there's a single board and um, it's held in place using the actual capacitors to mount the board uh, so what I'm going to try doing here is just loosening the clamps off and see if I can slide the board uh, out of the power supply can hopefully disconnect the main connector to it okay we'll take a look at that uh, later on but it does just appears to be a fuse um, rectifier and capacitor bank so quite significant uh, values we have here 100,000 microfarads at 6 volts 22,000 microfarads at 30 volts and the blue one is um, let's see it's 27,000 microfarads at 10 volts so some fairly big uh, capacitor values in there hopefully they'll be okay but I'll give those a full test later okay so what I'll do now is get this bracket out of the way okay that's just a simple bracket to hold the capacitors and board in place okay I've already taken the screws out of this box there were two at the back and uh, one around the side so I've taken those out already I'm not quite sure if there's anything else holding this in place we just have a ground strap on here so I'll try and find out where that's screwed onto and uh, get it disconnected okay it um, wasn't particularly easy to get to but I have now got it disconnected so I think this should now lift completely out of the way which it does Okay, let's get those out of the way. So I now have the uh, main part of the supply disconnected. Okay, so the main chassis of the supply doesn't look too bad, needs cleaning up. I'll take a few of these parts off uh, so I can give it a, a proper clean. I'll check all the connections and then in the uh, next video we'll start running some power into this 
uh, we'll use the variact to bring it up slowly and um, try and figure out exactly what should be connected to what. I think this arrangement down here is the uh, voltage selector and uh, I do have a, uh, a service manual for this. It doesn't include schematics but it does include uh, certain information. I think it includes information about the uh, mains voltage wiring but uh, I'll check that. Um, the rest of it I'll check. I'll fit a, a new uh, mains lead of course and um, as I say in the next video we'll try powering this up. Uh, what we'll do at the moment though is I'll get this out of the way and we'll have a quick look at the um, supplied board and uh, try and get it out of the housing. Okay so we'll have a quick look at the power supply board. I'll take it out of the housing. I've had a quick look at it and it's in quite good condition um, from the, the appearance of it. Uh, it does have um, indications on the board showing what each of the outputs should be so that could be useful later on. Um, but I do need to uh, test this fairly carefully before I apply power to it. Uh, we've got uh, 425 microfarad, 450 volt capacitor here, so I'm assuming this has mains going into it. And it does appear that it's a switching uh, supply, so it'd be quite interesting to have a look at that. Uh, again, I don't have a schematic for this, so I'll have to approach this on a um, see what we find basis. So the first thing I want to do is try and get it out of the enclosure, so we can see the back of it. Uh, I also need to uh, refinish this enclosure, so I'll be de-blasting it and uh, repainting it. Okay, so obviously this needs a, a good clean. I'll be taking the uh, capacitor out and testing it. Uh, it's quite useful that um, it's held in with screws. That means it'd be very easy to get out and test. I don't need to desolder it. Uh, but I do need to uh, desolder and remove um, at least a few of these to test uh, what condition they're in. Uh, they're showing as 1000 microfarad at uh, eight volts. Um, but some do appear to be slightly different types, so I don't know if any have been replaced or that's just what they had when they uh, built them, the, the, the board. Okay, but uh, typical sort of uh, arrangement for the time. As ever, the hybrid modules might cause us some uh, issues. It is possible to make uh, replacement um, modules to duplicate uh, what's in these. It's just a case of figuring out uh, what each one is. Um, I do have some documentation that uh, in theory lists what they all are but whether it's complete and will include the ones that happen to be on this board is, um, is a bit of an unknown at this point. But um, as you can see all this is we've got mains coming in, switching supply, and the DC going out, of course, is relatively high current and it goes to feed all the, um, uh, the, the supply rails. The rails we have indicated on the board are minus 5 volts, minus 12 volts, plus 12 volts, plus 5 volts. I think that's it. Okay, so that's it for this video. In the next one we'll look at putting power into the mains side of the supply uh, and then I'll get onto uh, this board and we'll start investigating it a bit further.